Welcome to the Idaho Fishing Report. Whether you are planning just a couple of hours or a full weekend of fishing, this is your one-stop place for all the information you need to plan your trip. It's all right here from weather forecasts and reservoir levels to the latest stocking reports and expert advice. And now the host of Idaho Fishing Report, Jeff Colors. Welcome to the Idaho Fishing Report for May 26, 2022, Memorial Day weekend. A weekend of remembrance for those who gave everything for the freedoms we have in this country. I have a great show for you this week. Jordan Rodriguez will be coming to talk about bass spawning. He joins us from Tightlines 208. I've got your regional updates. I've got your reservoir level, your boat ramp information, and of course, stocking and fishing tournaments. Funny thing about fishing tournaments, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. So sit back and relax. This is the Idaho Fishing Report. All right, let's start it off like we do each and every week. Over in the Magic Valley, sunset will be around 9.03 p.m. You're going to see a trend this week in the weather reports for every single region. Uh, so pay close attention here and it'll probably give you a good idea of what the rest of them are going to be like. Thursday, it's going to be almost 90 over near Twin Falls, and that is going to drop 10 degrees every day until Sunday. So high of 77 on Friday, high of 65 on Saturday, and a high of 57 on Sunday. Those temperatures kind of level out 57 on Sunday, 53 on Monday. Uh, then it starts going back up on Tuesday, 61 and 69 degrees. So not looking really great for the Memorial Day weekend. There is a 58% chance of rain in the morning over on Saturday. Again, about a 32% chance on Sunday and a 24% chance on Monday and Tuesday. Going to be a wet weekend. Your reservoir level and boat ramp information for the Magic Valley. Lake Walcott is at 97% full with an elevation of 42.45. The boat ramp is open. Little Wood is sitting at 89% full with an elevation of 52.31. The Littlewood boat ramp is open. There are no major stocking reports for the Magic Valley. Another trend that you will see in every region is there are zero fishing tournaments this weekend anywhere. None that have been reported to fish and game, that is. And that is your report for the Magic Valley. Okay, folks, it is that time of the show where you get the best expert advice in all of Southern Idaho. That's right. Journalist, owner, and creator of Tight Lines 208 joins us once again, Jordan Rodriguez. Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, getting ready for my trip down to Salmon Creek Falls for my first walleye trip. So hopefully we'll have something to report back next week on that. So pretty excited about that. I love it. I love it. I hope you, uh, hope you get into some for sure. Me too. Me too. All right, sir. What is that Tight Lines 208 hot tip of the week? Yeah, so this week I wanted to talk a little bit about bass spawning. Um, it's uh, that time of year where the bass are uh, in shallow. A lot of the bigger fish will be in shallow and they'll be either preparing to spawn or they will be spawning or sometimes they hang out a little bit after the spawn. And uh, there's kind of a misnomer out there that the spawn just like happens all at once. Um, and the, the truth of the matter is that the spawn takes place over a number of weeks um, and even could be a couple of months. And so you have some fish moving in earlier than others. You know, of course, they're triggered by water temperature um, to do this. Um, but some will come in earlier. Some will come in kind of middle of the road and then there'll be some stragglers as well. So. Um, there's there's a, a long period of time where many lakes and ponds and reservoirs will have uh, bass in spawning behavior, and we're kind of right in the middle of that. So uh, just a few notes on that. Uh, it certainly is a time of year when big bass do get caught. Uh, oftentimes they're in shallow water. Sometimes you can even see the fish. Uh, those ones are usually quite difficult to catch, but it can be done. Um, but just an encouragement for people to know that when those fish are in shallow, uh, if you do catch one and uh, if you do choose to fish for, for bass this time of year, uh, definitely encourage to uh, release, practice catch and release on those fish. Uh, they will go back to their, to their spawning rituals uh, once they're back in the water. So that's, that's definitely a good thing. Um, but taking a fish out at this time of year 
uh, you know, you're essentially removing, uh, you know, tens of thousands of eggs from the system. Um, and here in Idaho, it does take uh, quite a few years for bass to reach that big size and uh, to become those those big spawning class fish. So this is precisely the reason why you see certain rules in place at certain fisheries when it comes to bass. So here locally, Lake Lowell would be an example of uh, bass harvest is prohibited through June 30th. And that is precisely the reason is to protect the spawn. Uh, and make sure that any bass caught in that time frame uh, have to be released. And similar rules exist in other fisheries around the state. Uh, other places have trophy bass rules in place as a means of protecting uh, those spawning class fish. So um, it's an exciting time of year. There's a lot of big bass being caught and uh, just like to provide a little bit of information and education for people to know that um, you know, I recently caught a six pound largemouth bass and a fish like that in our area of the country is probably 15 years old, uh, potentially even older. It just takes a long, long time to grow those giants like that. So um, with that all being in mind, uh, definitely catch and release is the way to go. Absolutely. And, and uh, so I have two thoughts on, on what you were talking about. One is, and it's something that I always recommend folks, and I don't there's actually a reason I don't talk about fishing regulations because they can change and they vary from area to area. So uh, you brought up a great point. Make sure you check those regulations of where you're going. Some places like Crane, Fall, like, uh, Crane Falls, there'll actually be a sign there that says a trophy lake, but don't count on that. Make sure that you're checking the regs on that as well before you go anywhere to make sure what you're catching, whether it's bass or anything. Yeah, correct. And uh, that. The trophy runs, the trophy regulations on bass in our state uh, are a little bit of a head scratcher to me. I think perhaps the idea from Fish and Game is that it, it essentially turns into a catch and release fishery. Yeah. Uh, because it's the trophy rules are 20 inches and above right. for keeping. And fish above 20 inches, uh, both in the largemouth and smallmouth species, um, are pretty rare. You know, that's a pretty rare thing to see. And so with that being the case, I, I just feel like I know for myself and a lot of other serious bass anglers, like you would never keep a fish over 20 inches anyway. Um, so it essentially becomes uh, pretty much catch and release rules yeah. um, uh, on those lakes. And there's a, there's a number of those around. The other thing you'll see is what's called a slot limit where uh, no fish between yay and yay. Yep. And it's usually something like 12 to 16 inches um and that's again trying to protect spawning aged fish um and that's lowell reverts to that uh as of july 1st uh, and there's many others around the state uh ben ross is one and there's you know several others in in other regions as well where uh, they have that slot limit in place and it's all kind of geared toward the same thing of trying to improve bass quality and bass size uh, because the scientists behind these decisions are, are well aware of, you know, how long it takes to grow um, big size, trophy size uh, bass here in Idaho. Absolutely. So I, I just, and I have a kind of a follow-up question, especially for new anglers that might be out there and they're, maybe they don't know. Um, obviously the safe bet right now is just to catch and release, you know, all bass. But is there a way to tell if a fish is spawning, especially like if it's a female bass versus a male bass? Yeah, you can you can visually see whether a female has dropped her eggs. Um, you know, they they are super loaded up, so it, it looks like a pregnant fish, um, and that's the case with a lot of different species we have. You know, people familiar with like the jumbo perch during the ice fishing season. Um, those three pound fish are like two pounds of fish and a pound of egg weight um, is how much you know they put on, and and so you can tell. Um, with just the the swollen you know body cavity um and really uh, this time of year all adult size fish would be should be considered to be somewhere in their spawning cycle um you know potentially they've already dropped eggs but if you can't tell you know let it go and, and i would just say basically april through the end of june um even into july like you get into some of the northern more stretches where where it takes longer for the water to, to warm up um those are all fish that are you know 
that are spawning or are going to spawn and uh, should probably be put back for another day. There you go. I like that idea a lot better than you don't. There's no question. Just put them back through the end of June. All right. Yeah. And I'll say, Jeff, you know, for, for folks, and it, I guess it depends on where you live a little bit, but uh, for folks who are interested in harvesting bass, and there are some out there who uh, who really like to, to keep and eat bass, you know, there's stretches of the Salmon River and even stretches uh, through Hell's Canyon where uh, there's not size limits or in some cases there's not limits at all on bass. Um, so a trip like that could maybe be planned to go and, and harvest a pile of bass. Um, and then, you know, once we get into like midsummer and beyond here locally on the snake, you know, I wouldn't have uh, too much concern about somebody harvesting a, a small handful of like 12 to 14 inch smallies on the Snake River. Uh, the Snake River is just absolutely loaded with uh, with smallmouth bass and kind of that medium size class. So uh, at that point, you wouldn't really be doing a lot of harm. And, and obviously the rules are the rules. So the, the scientists set the rules and they do so in a way that they believe will support sustainable fishing. So um, it does come down to angler choice. And uh, I don't mean to, to be on a soapbox, but I just feel like a lot of people don't know. They don't realize that, you know, 20 inch bass is in its teens, if not older. Um, and when they learn that, you know, I, I teach stuff like that in, in my bass class and I just see a lot of light bulbs go off like, oh my gosh, I had no idea, right? That it would take that long or that, you know, that these fish even lived for that long. So um, yeah, it's just good to be educated. It's good to have as much information as we can when we get out on the water and uh, just wanted to point that out. I'm going to write a little something about it as well here coming up. So uh, it's good information to have. Awesome. All right. So you mentioned perch and uh, a few minutes ago, and I know that you got a class coming up on pan fishing. I do. June 15th, we're doing panfish school, and it is a deep dive on our uh, delicious smaller variety fish. So we're talking perch, crappie, and bluegill primarily. Uh, along with a couple bonus surprises that will slip in there. So, uh, you know, these are all fish that are uh, great for keeping and eating, and, and we don't have limits on them in Idaho. In places where we have these fish, they're usually very prolific, very numerous, and uh, Angler Harvest does next to nothing to uh, right. influence numbers and populations and things. So um, great, great fun fish to catch if you have kids uh, or if you just like catching fish. And certainly great species to target if you like to uh, catch and cook. And so we'll, we'll talk about all that stuff coming up on June 15th in Panfish School. And we're about halfway filled up. So uh, still some spots available if you'd like to join us there. Outstanding. And that's tightlines208.com. Or you can go to the Gem State Fishing page. Go to uh, our page. And we have a link to Jordan's website there as well. So if you've gone to download it, just click over a couple of pages and find Jordan's link. All right, journalist, owner, and creator of Tight Lines 208, Jordan Rodriguez, joins us each and every week with his hot tip of the week. Jordan, I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you next week. Yes, sir. All right. Well, big thanks to Jordan there. And uh, exciting news we have. We have an opportunity now. If you want to help support the show, you can do that through Patreon. We have a link on our website. Just go to gemstatefishing.com, click on the Patreon site. Here's some good news though, listeners. If you sign up to be a Patreon, there's a lot of advantages that you get, like you will get the podcast before anybody else does. But also additionally, we're gonna give you a discount to any of Jordan Rodriguez's Tightline 208 classes. Plus we're gonna give away a seat in every class that he has in the coming year, simply because you're a Patreon listener. So. If you like to support the show, you can do it for as little as $5 a month. And you can do that to help us continue to grow and you get some great discounts and you also get some great advantages. So go to gemstatefishing.com, click on the Patreon page and become an Idaho Fishing Report patron. Let's go to the other valley in the Southern Idaho region and that's the Treasure Valley. 
Let's look at Mountain Home first. Sunset there will be around 909 this weekend. So 93 degrees for the high on Thursday, 79 on Friday, 70 on Saturday. Sunday and Monday gets down to the low 60s, upper 50s. Tuesday and Wednesday starts to make a rebound, 67 and 74. So kind of that same pattern. You'll see morning rain on Saturday and Sunday, 37, 34% chance of that. Cloudy on Monday. Uh, big thing over there is going to be the winds, 12 to 13 through Saturday, but it's really going to pick up Sunday, Monday, 18 mile an hour wind. So just be mindful of that. In Boise, 91 degrees for your high on Thursday. Big drop there, 74 on Friday. And then another big drop, 66 degrees on Saturday, 57 degrees on Sunday. Kind of the same thing, starts to level out, 61 on Monday, 68 degrees for your high on Tuesday. And Wednesday, June 1st, 72 degrees for your high. Morning rain, likely on Saturday and Sunday as well. And the 50% chance marks in those areas. Uh, winds are pretty calm, 9 mile an hour, 11 mile an hour through Saturday. 13, 14 on Sunday and Monday, not too gosh awful bad. All right, how about that reservoir level and boat ramp information? Anderson Ranch is sitting at 60% full with an elevation of 4156. All boat ramps are open except Deer Creek. Arrow Rock is at 83% full with an elevation of 3,200. The high ramp and low ramp is open. Lucky Peak is sitting at 79% full, so it's up with an elevation of 3,034. And the uh, only Roby Creek and Max Creek are closed. So that's the big change. I was giving you the ones that are open. Now I can tell you which ones are closed because it's a far less number at Lucky Peak. Lake Lowell is sitting at 62% full with an elevation of 2524. All ramps are open. There is one stocking report for the Treasure Valley area. Little Camas will be getting stocked with 4,500 fish by Fish and Game. And as I said earlier, there are no fishing tournaments. Hey, guess what, listeners? We have a new website. That's right. It's gemstatefishing.com. Go there to check out all the links because you can get all the information we provide here. You can also contact us through the site. Time to head up or down that double nickel, whichever way you're coming from, to the Cascade area. Sunset will be around 9.17 p.m. High on Thursday will be 78 degrees, 61 on Friday, and it drops into the mid-50s on Saturday, mid-40s on Sunday. It does start to come back up on Monday, 55, then 58 on Tuesday, and then a high of 61 on Wednesday. Weekend showers are likely... Uh, more so starting on Friday with a 44% chance of rain and then nearly 60% chance of rain on Saturday and Sunday. Not looking too great up in Cascade this weekend. Um, 9 to 10 mile an hour winds. Nothing too crazy up there for that. Your reservoir level and boat ramps for the Cascade area. Cascade is at 81% full with an elevation of 4823. All ramps except French Creek are open. Deadwood is sitting at 67% full with an elevation of 5316 and the Cozy Cove ramp is open. Man Creek is set 99% full with an elevation of 2888. Both the south and north ramps are open. All right, some pretty big stocking happening here in the Cascade area. Uh, fishing game will be annihilating Cascade Reservoir with 87,650 fish through this weekend. So be on the lookout for that. Horse Thief is getting 3,000. And Lost Valley is being stocked with 14,000 fish. And as I said before, there are no fishing tournaments anywhere this weekend. Hey, do you want to be part of the show? Email us with questions or your fishing report from your last trip. You can email us at jimstatefishing208 at gmail.com. Want to send me pictures of your fish? Send it to myfish at jimstatefishing.com. And if you have questions about the show or want something answered, email us at questions at jimstatefishing.com. Let's head over to the Snake River Reservoir area. Sunset will be around 921 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. High on Thursday of 85, about a 13 degree drop on Friday to 72. Saturday will be a high of 65, and Sunday will be a high of 56. So we're seeing that pattern throughout the entire southern region. Nice warm temperatures on Thursday, dropping by about 10 degrees a day, getting you through till Sunday. And so pretty, pretty consistent pattern 
throughout the weekend. The rain showers there also Friday through Sunday, evening showers on Friday, showers all day on Sunday, uh, anywhere from a 45 to a 58 percent chance of rain throughout the weekend. Winds are pretty negligible through the weekend, 5 to 10 mile an hour. Picks up a little bit on Memorial Day, 12 mile an hour, partly to mostly cloudy throughout the first part of the week. Brownlee is currently sitting at 2069. All ramps are open. There are no stocking reports for the Snake River Reservoir area. Pop quiz. Are there any fishing tournaments in the Snake River Reservoir area? No, that's right. You are paying attention. No fishing tournaments anywhere this weekend. You can find us on Facebook groups or you can follow us on Twitter at Idaho underscore report. All right, it is time for that moon phase report. The new moon will be here on May 30th. The first quarter will be on June 7th. Apogee will be on June 1st, so just around the corner. The next perigee will be on June 14th. So the new moon will be here on Memorial Day. Uh, Fishing is going to get a little bit better as the weekend progresses. As far as the moon phase, uh, the weather is a whole different story, but we'll get to that in the grade. Fishing will be good in multiple hours throughout the weekend. Peak hours will be around midnight and then again from 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We'll see another peak late in the evening around sunset near 8 o'clock. Memorial Day will have three solid peak times in the good. 3 a.m., again at 3 p.m., and then a sunset cruise at 9 p.m. The rest of the early part of the week starts to diminish as we go out of the new moon and into the first quarter. All right, well, it is time for my grade. It was a weird week. I actually, I start on Monday, Tuesday, kind of start looking at the weather reports. And generally, those are pretty solid and they they hold up throughout the entire report. But something shifted. Now, I'm not a weatherman and never have been. I rely completely on weather.com and, of course, our local TV providers to kind of help keep me up to date. So I actually had to go back in and change my report last minute this week because what originally was supposed to be a pretty decent weekend turned into a uh, wet, cold, and rainy weekend. The grade was going to be a B to an A. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but I'm afraid it is diminished greatly. I would say if you could get out Thursday, Friday, A days. I would definitely give those an A. That goes down throughout the weekend. Uh, I would give it a low C and, or maybe even a D as we progress Saturday and Sunday. Monday may not be too bad, but most of the areas is going to have wind, so maybe a C. It'll pick back up on Tuesday. But your grade's not going to get great because the moon phase, we're coming into the first quarter and that's going to really kind of mess everything up. So there it is, folks. If you can get out Thursday, Friday, you can get uh, probably some good fishing. And that's my plan. I'm going to do a couple small local trips this week and I'll be able to report back to you next week on those. So there it is, my grade for the week. Well, that is another episode of the Idaho Fishing Report for Memorial Day weekend. Let's remember those who gave everything so that you and I can enjoy the freedoms of this country. Big shout out to Jordan Rodriguez from Tight Lines 208 joining us and giving us those great tips on spawning bass. Thank you listeners for joining us. I really appreciate it. The show has grown exponentially and it's all because of you. I'm very grateful for that. Check us out on our webpage. If you feel like uh, helping to support us financially, you can do that for less than $3 a month. You'll automatically get entered into win a seat into one of Jordan's upcoming classes and the next one is pan fishing. So that is it. I'm going out to do some walleye fishing and uh, I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you on the water. We would like to thank you for listening to the Idaho Fishing Report and would like to remind you to visit our website, gemstatefishing.com, or you can find us on Facebook or YouTube. I'd like to thank our sponsors, our guests, and experts, as well as you, our listener, for making this show possible. This has been an Old Man Studios production. Join us next week another episode of the Southern Idaho Fishing Report.